fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. The constitutional point of view was critical for Jefferson's support of the Bill of Rights. It's Saturday. Welcome to spring, for some of you. <laughs> Welcome to the Hayden Collins Radio Program, the Intelligence Syndicate. We're working hard for you every day, believe it or not. Every day, working hard for you. Now, let's take a break. <laughs> okay, I uh, went to Silicon Valley this past week. And followed up on some of the items we were talking about. Silicon Valley moving to Austin, Texas, uh, some reasons behind that. For the longest time, I thought it was purely economic reasons. I thought it was, oh, okay, you know, they're tired of California taxes, you know, this, that, and the other. and Just saying, okay, what's the next step for these guys? What are they going to do? So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about New Zealand, to where they're creating laws based on madmen. And, and we, we've seen that. You do not create laws based on madmen. You, you can't stop people from going mad. And creating laws to stop madmen doesn't work because you never know when a madman's going to go mad. So they've got some mature things they're going to have to overcome. And I guess they're going to figure it out so they don't become another Venezuela or they don't become another Syria. They may want to figure out a way to keep their citizens in a position where the citizens can protect themselves instead of the government doing a Venezuela, or the government doing a Syria on them, or the government doing a, a Somalia on them, who knows. So let's start off with Silicon Valley. California taxes are outrageous. I've been out there plenty of times. I'm going back out there again, watching some of the things. Do you know that a hamburger, I, my, what was it? It's Jack in the Box. It's a restaurant that's out on the West Coast. I actually like it. It's called Jack in the Box. and for a drink, fries, and a, a double cheeseburger, I think, was $9. Now, back home here, in Georgia, it's not that much, but there it is. And there's hiring signs. This one, this one kind of got me. There's a hiring sign for $14 an hour to work at a fast food restaurant. And then right out the front of the fast food restaurant, right, right at the corner of the street, there's three tenths of homeless people. <laughs> so, so there's definitely a, uh, an economy standard there that is, that is the envy of the world, no doubt. So let's pitch Silicon Valley for a moment. If you guys remember way back in the day, we had Slorenda. One of the Obama administration's big push for solar cells company went upside down and backwards and destroyed a lot of good small businesses in Silicon Valley in the Fremont area. Just, just destroyed these guys. And I went out there for the I was out there for an audit right after that, so I got to see it firsthand how bad it was. Guys that are putting their life, blood, and soul into a business just to have Solandra turn it upside down and destroy their family and their business. Then there was a couple of other little corrupt things that took place in Silicon Valley. There was one of these deals where, without going into too much detail, you could make chassis for computers and, you know, you made a deal with the people that were making the chassis that they got paid for rework and you would always ensure there was rework so you could get kickbacks. Uh, then there was the scam to where, hey, we ordered so many power supplies and they'd always take one or two boxes off the top and resell them somewhere else. They, they, there were several scams going on in Silicon Valley. Several things going on. And it was very costly stuff. So asking, I, I, asking these people, I said, how are you moving? You know, what, why Texas? 
you know, some of them are moving to Georgia, some of them are moving to Texas. Says, so why are you leaving these blue states? You know, the happy California to go to a red state. You know, what, what's what's the deal? And and despite what you hear in the press and everything else, you know, I'm looking at these staunch conservatives saying they're fed up with California and they're leaving it and they're taking their businesses with them. I'm going, Apple is not a conservative business. He goes, no, Apple's not, but a lot of their employees are. I said, what? He goes, yeah, you always see the, the store employees, which are the millennials and this, that, and the other. You know, there are a lot of Apple employees that uh, they don't like the corruption in Silicon Valley. They don't like being taxed for everything they're doing, overtaxed. And if they had the opportunity, they're going to move their division. They're going to move their stuff. They're, they're getting it out of there. So they try to choose an area where they're going to feel, you know, a little bit more comfortable. Austin, Texas is one of them. Uh, boy, Rome, Georgia is another one. They're getting a bonus. And it's these red states that are benefiting from the move from Silicon Valley. Now, it, it's going to give them a tax windfall. They're going to get money back in their pocket. Not like they're going to get a tax refund. But the tax windfall will be that they don't have to pay those taxes. That's going to be the tax windfall. That, that's where the change is going to be. That's going to be a bonus for them. But it'll be a bonus for the Texas economy, obviously. You know, definitely be a bonus for the Georgia economy. And the other thing that this young man and I were talking about, he says, yes, we get to leave some of the stupid madness behind. And I said, what? He goes, yeah, he said originally he was from Nebraska. Went out there with his degree, got a job with, you know, Apple computers, blah, 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 worked his way up the chain. And he just watched the madness out there and shook his head over and over and over again. But it, it was isolated madness, and they always sensationalized it, right? He also brought something else to my attention, too. He said, he said do you know California is an English-only state? They voted it as an English-only state. I said, you got to be kidding me. He goes, nope. English-only. I said, what the heck? Every time you see the news or something like that... You always say they're going Spanish only. He goes, yeah, it's just the news. So we're just tired of that stupidity. And I said, well, what's Texas going to do for you? He goes, well, the first thing that Texas is going to do for us, and I love this so much. He goes, the first thing that Texas is going to do for us is going to give us a yard so my kids could have a safe place to play that I don't have to worry about California gangs. And I said, well, aren't you worried about, you know, Texas gangs? He goes, yeah, they wear cowboy hats and ride horses. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> and we all know that there's a bit of humor in that. Everybody has problems with gangs. But it was just his, his version of it was, in Austin, we're far enough away from the border. Uh, there's not any issues there. He, he had all of the positive things in place. But I think the biggest part of it was uh, he'll be able to buy way more house there than he was able to in California. His kids will have a healthier environment to be raised in. I think the biggest thing in our conversation was the educational standards are different in Texas than they are in California. And the atmosphere in Texas is just a little bit more serious than they are in California. So I had to follow along that line of questioning. I go, why? He goes, well, in California, schools are in business to employ teachers. You can tell by the teachers' union and everything else they do. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, in Texas, it looks like schools are in business to educate children. We met our teachers. They're great. Way better than any teachers we had in Texas or in California. I said, really? He goes, yeah. They still care. In California, it's talk to our union rep. I said, oh, dear God, you're kidding me. He goes, no, it's awful. So it's just one of those realizations. So I think that this move, this exodus from California that everybody's seeing, is not purely political. It's based on taxes. It's based on corruption. And it's based on the fact that these people that started these industries 10 and 15 years ago have got kids that are growing up, and they've recognized the environment is not what they thought it was. And they want to change environments and raise their kids in an environment that's suitable and safe. I found it a very shocking conversation. But it was eye-opening. Okay, so, so that was the little trip down Silicon Valley way. Now, I did go back to Fremont last week. I ran into a couple of the guys, uh, the cable makers that work for Solyndra. They're kind of not fully recovered even now, but their businesses are still open. Uh, two of the businesses that I knew when I was out there, they're still closed. Nobody's even bought the facilities. In fact, that warehouse role where Solyndra uh, was, a few of them are occupied. 
the rest of them are still vacant. You know, it's it's kind of awful. At least they look vacant. Mmm. Coffee's good today. Okay, so yes, another madman grabbed a weapon and went and shot up someplace. Which is not a standard level of civility in today's population. Most people are not mad. In fact, I would go as far as to say most people are pretty sane. Most people care about their families. Most people care about their surroundings. Okay? So one would have to question the integrity of a elected organization that would plan laws around mad people. I'm, I'm not sure of where that's going to lead them. But let's take a little trip down memory row here in Venezuela a few years ago. Everybody turn in your weapons. The government's going to take care of you. You will be safe. Venezuela today. Riots. Protest. Starving people. Uh, <laughs> everything turning upside down. Finland. Finland. That, I talked about that last week. I'll talk about it again because it's starting to surface in the news now. It took them a few weeks to catch up, but it's starting to surface in the news. The Prime Minister Cabinet staff, all, everybody dealing with that financial crisis in Finland, all of them resigned. Government's upside down. They can't afford the cost anymore. They can't afford inflation anymore. And, and they're toast. They, they just can't afford it. They can't even afford to enforce their laws. Keep an eye on that. Syria, Libya, turn in your weapons. We'll take care of you. Trust us. <laughs> Divulge into civil war. Okay? Refugees that would otherwise fight for their country don't have the ability to fight for their country and have to leave. That's what's going on in Venezuela right now. So let's fast forward to our, our latest madman coming forward dictating to the legislative group of a country, you're going to do this because of me. And that legislative group is falling for it. So the madman is dictating to the legislative group, you're going to change the laws that I want you to change because I'm a madman and I'm going to go do something that's going to force such a public outcry about madmen that you're going to have to change all your laws and change everything else. So one has to wonder that if a simple madman can manipulate the legislature in the way they're doing with this, how many madmen will it take to manipulate a legislature to the point where the legislature cannot be manipulated anymore? Think about that. How many madmen will it take to manipulate a legislation before the legislation cannot be manipulated anymore? See, sooner or later, just like in California, just like those guys leaving California, going to a more suitable environment, that madness will come to an end and those laws will disappear. Now, I have to bring this to everybody's attention. Of course, you realize I'm talking about Second Amendment here. But let, let's bring this in a little bit. Do you realize that all of the amendments in the Constitution, only one of them has laws that are at state level to you know, restrict them? Yep, it's the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is the only one that has laws to restrict it. Wow. That's why people are worried about the Second Amendment falling, because somebody's actually writing laws against it. You know, you got people right now in Maryland. This was a shocker to me. In Maryland, they passed some law that the cops are going to come around and collect your weapons. Now, I don't know all the details of it. I didn't even read the law, because I haven't had time. But people in Maryland should be up in arms and over the edge on it. Because they wrote a law saying, the government thinks you're a madman. We're going to come collect your weapons. Well, who is the government to say that I'm a madman? Who, who are their specialists? Was it the Clintons? <laughs> My joke there is, the government can declare anybody a madman and can come take away all their rights. You just have to piss off the appropriate government employee. Now, a couple of my boys are cops. 
we've already had this conversation they're going to find some other place to be if that order should ever come down but the uh the the obnoxious thing here is that you actually have cops that believe that that was a good idea and unfortunately when they were trying to take the guns from this guy he said all right i'm going to die with the gun in my hand and then he became the madman and killed some cops they eventually killed him and they got the gun that was the important thing they, they destroyed the second amendment for getting that gun and killing a bunch of cops for something that probably never needed to be addressed but who knows because all the individuals involved are dead and the law still stands and you have to sit back and wonder okay did that really need to happen? I see the flip side of this is what happens if they were right? What happens if this guy was a madman and was going to go out there on their own? Well, see, that's where I talk to you about you can't write laws for madmen. It just can't be done. Now, I'll tell you the other thing, too. Do you know how many shootings? And that you, I'll let you go to the FBI and research this on yourself. Yes, the trusted FBI. God, help me with that one. <laughs> I know, the investigation's done. It turned out just the way we said it would. And lo and behold, nobody else was ever investigated. So I see the second shoe's going to fall soon. Is, you know, Mueller, you didn't do due diligence in your investigation. You never researched any of this stuff that was a part of the same investigation you were doing with Russian collusion. Well, I was just doing Russia. No, you weren't. You were looking at all kinds of stuff. You got these guys on, what, tax transfers. Really? Really? So there's going to be a liability that's going to fall on his head. And there's going to be a liability that's going to fall on each one of those lawyers' heads in regards to this mess. And I, you know what? It, uh, it's going to look real bad for him. I, I think this hammer is going to go a long way. But look, they're, they're looking for madmen. They represented madmen. Somebody cried and screamed and cried wolf. And... They spent two years answering that cry, making show of it, sensationalizing it, and cheated a nation for two years. Cheated us out of salary, cheated us out of time, and it was a politically driven move. It's odd that the elected officials are swayed so easy into doing these things and it does not affect their campaigns for re-election if there were term limits we would have less of these things if there were term limits we would have less of these long-term investigations that were boondoggles for political purposes not that we would have less investigations for real issues but there would be fewer boondoggles because everybody knows with patience that this guy's either gone in two years four years or six years, whatever the case may be and it just doesn't matter in the life of the country. But what does matter in the life of the country is that we don't write laws for madmen. We don't follow the example of Finland and their socialist program, or Venezuela and their socialist program, and we don't take weapons away from citizens. The Second Amendment should have no laws written against it. Sorry, sooner or later that's going to come to a head. And they're trying to duck around it, saying, well, this law is not about the Second Amendment. This law is about the health and well-being of a man. Okay. Uh, there are other amendments that protect that. You, uh, you are reaching state of Maryland, and you're crossing a very fine line state of Maryland. But I'll have you know, state of Maryland, that once that line is crossed and once it gets taken to the Supreme Court, uh, they will side with the Second Amendment regardless of who's up there, Democrat or Republican judges. And I think you, what you're going to find is that all of your efforts to write laws around madmen will come to the conclusion that the only madmen that were involved in that were the fools that wrote a law against the Second Amendment. Hmm. All right. Well, for this next week. Oh, by the way. By the way, uh, the roundtable for next week, we're going to do another live one. So don't look for a uh, produced one on the air. And then next week, we're going to talk about teachers. I've got a meeting with a group of teachers. Yes, the very same group I was talking about last week in California. And we're going to be talking about the realm of activity in a classroom. 
Now, before we get into this, it's not going to be a big segment. It'll be a little segment. But understand, teachers are protected by law on what they can teach and can't teach in the classroom. Not that they're restricted by law. Hmm. How does that play out? <laughs> How's the Second Amendment protected by law and not restricted by law? If teachers... All right, I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, come back from the break. Oops, I yarded again. The twins are at it. And then enjoy your spring. Try to stay out of the heavy storms and stay out of the floodwaters because most of the Midwest, dear God help them, they're swimming. <laughs> I might find myself out there filling sandbags again. <sighs> won't be the first time in my lifetime, won't be the last. You guys have a good Saturday. Stay out of trouble.